Thomas is with us in New York City. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Thomas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Dave. Thank you so much. Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? Great, man. What's up? Nothing. Quick question. First of all, I just wanted to preface it by saying, Dave, I've been listening to your show for a while, and I really want to thank you for every all your advice. I used to be one of those people that really just thought about, well, yeah, I can afford that payment. I, you know, I can afford that payment, and just all of a sudden, I'm just under this massive amount of debt. And after listening to you for a couple of months, I've just basically restructured the way I do everything. I'm just, you know, stop buying stuff. I'm getting my debts paid off. I'm, within a couple of years, I plan to be completely debt free. So, thank you very much for your your advice. Um, my question, my question is, I've heard you talk a little bit about whole life policies. Now, my wife and I right now have whole life policies. They're good until we're 125 years old. We have about $1.5 million in coverage. Costs us about $680 a month to have that. Um, and I've heard you sort of say that you didn't think they were a great investment, um, but I haven't really heard you get into any details about why you think that is. So I was wondering if you could just talk about that a little bit and you know, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. And, and if, if, if I am, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll hit the point. Okay, sure. Um, well, the, the overarching main companies that sell whole life, the numbers break down about like this. Per $100 that you pay in premium, you can buy the same amount of term life insurance, 15-year level term, 20-year level term, for about $5. Got it. It's roughly 20x, mm. okay, and uh, for the insurance Obviously, whole life, though, has another component to it that term does not have. You're obviously aware of that. You spend a lot of money on this. And that other component is a cash value buildup. Now, the cash value buildup is the other $95 out of $100 approximately. Could be $91, could be whatever, but it's somewhere in that range. Nationally, across the top 10 whole life insurance companies, it is $95. Okay, so $95 going into cash value, $5 purchases the same amount of insurance, life insurance. Now, so then the, the, the gripe that those of us have that hate whole life life insurance, uh, and it's not a mild dislike, I hate it, um, is, that, uh, is that what happens to that $95? And uh, in cash value, what you will do, and you're well past this, but if you went back and looked at your policy pages, your cash value buildup for the first three years, your savings buildup is zero. 100% of the $95 goes to fees. It's front loaded as an investment, which in and of itself is not necessarily evil. It's just frowned upon in the financial planning world by and large. Um, The second thing is that once you do start building it nationally, and again, I don't know your policy, but it's not going to be substantially different. Uh, the average rate of return on the $95, if you look at your actual cash value buildup, including the three years of zeros on the front end, it ends up being an average of about 1.2%. Mm. Let's be generous and say it's double that, 2.4%. Right. Still not a good long-term investment. If I could get 2.4 on my money market, I'd be dancing a jig, but uh, right. but not on my long-term investments. My long-term investments need to be north of 10% to be beating inflation and taxes. And so it's a horrible rate of return on a long-term investment. And those two things are bad, but the the, the stake in the heart of whole life and the reason the entire financial planning community that are not – in the whole life life insurance business have abandoned whole life. No one sells this, but whole life insurance agents, no one sells it anymore. No traditional financial planner, no uh, smart vester pro, no one in the financial world sells it. The only people that sell it are whole life agents. They've gone away from it. And, and this is the reason once you've paid the extra $95 to build up, build up, build up, build up. And, uh, on your $680 premium, uh, you said you had a one point, something million dollar policy one i've got a million dollars my wife has half a million and that's our combined premium is okay okay yeah. so 1.5 million it, 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 if you die your wife the beneficiary i assume would get one million dollars that's your face my my daughter it doesn't matter if okay gonna, but yes yeah right. whoever the beneficiary is is going to get the million dollars right, right that's right. what they're going to get that's all right if you have a cash value of two hundred thousand. At 2.4% that you put $95 per hundred in, 
to get to 200000 or to get to 100000 none of that. You, so you have a savings account that for the first three years you put in there gives you nothing. After that, it pays 2.4%, and when you die, they keep your money. All right. Which makes okay. it absolutely horrendous. So you're much better off, and many, many decades ago, the financial planning community, by and large, started moving towards buying term life insurance for the $5 per 100 and right. doing almost anything else with the 95 but over in the investment world, away from the insurance world. Put it in a okay, freaking so fruit you, jar. At least it's there when you die. Okay. So it, it, you said, would you would your advice be to just terminate those policies and just put and do what you suggested? Purchase relatively inexpensive term life policies and then put you know additional money. I mean, I I do have investments. I mean, I could just up those investments. I invest into the directly, mostly directly in the S and P five hundred. I've got a four hundred one k. Exactly. So would you, that, but that get would the term advice? life in place first? Yeah, exactly. Get your term in place first. Never cancel life insurance until you've got new okay. in place because we don't want you to have the proverbial milk truck or bus in the middle. Okay. Between the so two. So just look at the money I've, I've been spending over the last five, ten years is just write that off yep. and just start. It'll make you want to throw up. Yeah. But yes. But that's yeah. that's that's okay. the case. Now you will get you will get your cash value out by canceling the policies, whatever it is. Okay. That okay. doesn't it doesn't Got die it. it doesn't die then. But you never get both. I understand. You never get the okay. insurance and the investments and you're always paying for both. And that's the Got it. that's the consumer advocate like us, our reason for hating on these things and just saying they're absolutely horrible it's an antiquated product from the 40s and 50s that built large buildings in the skylines of almost every city and um and that everyone now has pretty well moved away from except the companies with their name on that kind of stuff so uh, right. anyway okay. they, all of that to I'm say now it. one Thank last you, cat one, one last part of this discussion that's worth sure. having because sure, sure. you're you're obviously doing well financially and you're you're doing really good with your analytics on this the last thing that happens is the the irony is that we really don't necessarily need life insurance for our whole life. Right. So if you've got two or three million dollars in your investments and zero debt and the kids are grown and gone and you die, well, oh, I think your wife will be okay. I, I was looking at it as like, I, well, I can I can die broke if I want to, and at least they'll have this much. But I, I, you're right in the sense that I I won't be able to spend all my money. Yeah, but if um, you put I'll the ninety five dollars in a fruit jar, you wouldn't die broke. Right, exactly. Right. Okay, I'm doing it. Thank you, Dave. Hey, man. Thanks for the call. Wow. Well, great, great discussion. I thought whole life was going to be like timeshares where it just kind of dies over time, but TikTok has caused a renaissance of whole life agents to start their financial really? planning influencer careers. You're kidding. And so now... They're, so they're like whole life guys that are trying to make it cool again. Well, they're peddling it with make new Make whole terms. life cool again. You've seen this. Index universal life, infinite banking. Dave, infinite the wealth... Infinite banking This is, is the hack wealthy people don't want you to infinite know. Infinite banking is back? That yes. was a scam from like 20 years ago. Well, Gen Z is eating it up on, on the TikTok, Dave. Oh, so man. It's caused this infinite, resurgence. Infinite banking is code for whole life that sucks bad that's what it is you know so the infinite banking is you put so much in the whole life that it starts to pay its own and you premium. borrow money from yourself dave it's and genius you borrow money from yourself and guess what there's no taxes on borrowed money well no kidding doofus there's never been taxed on borrowed money life you just hack. run over there and get you a credit card debt. oh my god there's no taxes on the debt you dumb butt of course there's not. Why is oh my goodness. It? I can't believe infinite banking is being made it's cool on Tic Tac. Just ignore I mean, all my of God. that. I, this Tic Tac thing is just driving me nuts. Now it's Tic Tac, according to Dave. Well, hey, well, I gave here's up. the takeaway. Just... Get term life 10 to 12 times your annual income, 15 to 20 your policy. You know policy what? If infinite with our banking friends can make it on Tic Tac, I bet I could make it on Tic Tac. For sure you can. This, is, this clip is the start right here. Oh, man.